Life is sweet Let it sweep you off your feet Hi, this is Allie and Find Your Joy. Thanks for joining us today for a really interesting, interesting guest that we have on here today. Sandra Kellogg, uh, she is one of the co-founders of Empowered Soul Network. Sandra has been doing things. So she's a multidimensional thought leader, a certified spiritual consultant, intuitive coach. She has been leading retreats for over 20 years. She barely looks 20 to look at her. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, it's just I, I had uh, opportunities to spend some time with uh, Sandra a few weeks ago, and she's just a, an amazing woman and a delight. And Sandra, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I'm excited to, to share with you and your audience. Uh, well, well, we're happy to hear from you. Um, I, I, I wanted to... It's always interesting when I see something, you know someone some way, and then you start to learn more things about them, and it just... I feel like I'm on a highway that has all these lanes going into it at once, and I'm not sure which exit to take at the first time. But uh, so you've been doing retreats and and leading things like that since you were quite young. Like when did let's can we start there? Because I'm because I'm because I'm Snoopy. I like to know stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not as young as you think I look right now. I'm, I'm the, the the powers of our our Zoom uh, meeting as well, but. <laughs> Um, but I have always had a baby face that I right. despised when I was a kid. So I'm, yes. I'm happy to have it now. I have been involved in some level of, of leadership when it comes to spiritual, intuitive development, leadership training since I was a kid. My parents were, were speakers, workshop lecturers, all of that kind of thing, teaching people about the fact that everybody's energy first and everybody has ESP was the the tag phrase at the time back in the day. And so it's kind of one of those things I was immersed in. Mm. And then I, you know, I got involved in there. They led group workshops in the house sometimes. And I was one of the, the little, the leaders of that. So I got my foot in the water there. And then I taught my first class when I was 13. Mm. Uh, so I remember a bunch of adults. It was nerve wracking as all get out, but I I remember doing it and feeling really empowered and feeling so connected to something that was beyond me, which was very cool. And that was a journey of mine for since then that I strayed away from it for times because as any good child will do, they rebel and want nothing to do with what their parents are doing. And so right. I, I went down the corporate nonprofit world for a bit and developed uh, affordable housing and then just found myself pulled back constantly. Always the, you know, the little nose is always kind of poking over there, resisting, poking, resisting. And at a certain point, I stopped resisting and said, OK, I think this is this is part of my path and dove into getting certified to do consulting back in, I think it was 2005 was when right. I first got certified for that and worked with a, a program called the Wayshowers College, which is a pioneer for a lot of the stuff that, that, that you hear about in this day. All, all of that talk that, that we hear, which is so amazing now about that, about your energy, you have natural intuition, you have the power to manifest, all of that. They were one of the way showers and, and, and pioneers for that back in the 60s and 70s. Although, let's let's face it, that's been around for thousands of years. It has been around for thousands yeah. of years. I get it. But we've been slow on the uptake here in the West. So we called it different. And, and I think also in the West, um, label, well, I shouldn't say that. I, I guess everywhere. Labels matter. And sometimes we can all be talking about the same thing. And depending mm -hmm. what someone calls it, mm -hmm. it may or may not feel okay to a person. So I could walk I could walk through a mall and it might say there's a psychic there, or mm -hmm. I might go somewhere else and someone says that someone is intuitive 
or I remember when it was ESP. I remember that very well. And I could go into a church and it might be called prof prophetic or revelatory. And we're just really describing everyone's um, sensitivity to and their development of recognizing energy and how this works and and listening just listening and trusting and so i so it's so i get it because it it seems new and it's really ancient and it's all of those things all at once yeah and and i think it is it is that it's it's i think the fact that it's coming into this mainstream mm -hmm. is pretty cool actually yes because it means that there is something bigger happening at least in my opinion there is that yes. you know, the ripple is happening and and there's need for it now if, that's very obvious but the fact that that's all happening and people are sharing more freely about that you know you even talk about business people now when Absolutely. i when i go and do a corporate retreat they are embracing the idea of working with energy or even just the, you know, the concept that there is something out there and that your mindset can affect your energy and vice versa. So it's pretty cool. I think it's a, a wild ride and I'm excited we're on it. It is. It is. It's wonderful. So, so when you, when you were first certified, that was as a consultant, you know, what exactly does that mean? A spiritual consultant for, for you? I mean, it means many things to many people, I guess, but yeah in 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 your terminology and in your use what do you what does that mean yeah so that the very this you're absolutely right everybody has their own their own verbiage and for me what that is is helping people connect in i the very first consultation i learned through the wayshores college was how to help people connect in with their inner guidance and to mm -hmm. learn how they work with their sensitivity and their intuition so we have that that more generic terminology of intuition, but we also know that there's a kind of a filtration process, if you will. Mm. Energy is just energy, but we in our, our bodies need to filter it somehow. So people teaching people how they filter that, you know, what whether they're working with clairvoyance, clairaudience, the the inner knowing, psychometry, and then learning more about how that works with their inner communication system. So that mm -hmm. they're crystal clear on that. So that was the very first consultation I I learned to and got certified in in um, in doing, and it it involved also a whole bunch of spiritual ethics, just really learning how to work with people from mutual respect and mm. and knowing that that I can't give you my I can't give you your answers. Right. And that that energy of you, you will get what you need when you're ready for whatever that is. All of these different ethics about working with that. So there was a whole foundation that that created. Right. Um, that then I built upon learning other consultations and so forth and how to help work with your energy. That's the other side of it is the spiritual consultation. So you've got the intuitive coaching Coaching can be more practical, right? It can bring in energy stuff, but, you know, I can, sometimes I just, when I'm working with business clients, it's, you know, strictly mindset stuff and, and setting goals and how do you, how do you work with that and keep yourself as a laser beam going forward, right? But then the spiritual cons consultation part is that reality that for those people that embrace that reality that you are energy first, and then the body is just part of that. Right. It's helping people have that that bird's eye perspective. And how do they make that practical in their daily life, but still maintain that the reality that I am um, living in two worlds at once? Right. And so is it just it, it just came to my mind is so as part of what you do, um, I, I'm guessing that there is at times people come from all kinds of backgrounds, especially once we have the word spiritually on there. So there's 
there's a belief or a lack of belief or religious or training or doctrine or dogma or there's all this other stuff that you know we come and we carry our little bags in when we go anywhere go uh, go to the mall go to a meeting go on a date be in a business you know organization or something like that so is that some of the things that are addressed when you're like does that is that do you do you touch that at all or is that how does that work? Because it, I'm guessing it influences how people are able or not to receive this, right? I... Yeah, it's interesting that you ask that because I know when I, the way I was raised, it was more from a, that, the way I interpreted it at least was more from that spiritual perspective. It wasn't religious per se, mm -hmm. um, but there was all of this crossover I saw, right? And even the founder of that of that college and that movement brought in and, and talked about biblical quotes and stuff to just kind of bridge the gap for all of that. So mm -hmm. the way I approach and work with it is there is this, again, focused on the spiritual con consulting part, right? There is this mutual connection with the concept that we are connected to something greater mm. that there is there is something bigger out there i don't even want to say greater because there's no greater and lesser but something bigger and there's that bigger picture and we're all connected with each other and yet at the same time we have our own unique purpose we have our own unique thrust like the little cells in our body right they all have their own unique purpose within this great universe of my body so it's that kind of idea. And then, then it spans the gamut because as long as you have that kind of connection, there is something to work, we can work with together. Right. right. The rest of it is just nuances and details and how you want to process and interpret and work with what we do together. Right. Well, that's fascinating. I, I, I mean, I, I, it's also interesting to me. So, so typically, what, what is, what does a day look like for you, or is there a typical day? If you have all, the, I mean, that's a, it's a wide variety of clients and a wide variety of, um, of topics that you cover. So, how does, so maybe you don't have a typical day, but let's go for it, anyways. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's I don't have a typical typical day, and it's funny you say say the wide variety because that's all often at times been one of those thoughts that that I kind of have to reassess every now and then of where's where's my passion in it all ah. in who I'm working with, and at the moment I love it all. <laughs> I love working with corporate clients. I love it's they just have all their different facets and nuances and personalities and all of that. So typical day could could be working with one-on-one -on -one clients, doing group coaching or mastermind, obviously a whole lot of like behind the scenes stuff right. with the Empowered Soul Network. Uh, I've been doing all of these interviews with people, which has been a lot of fun, kind of similar to doing the podcasts. And then when I have retreats coming up, there's obviously there's a, a good focused effort on, on those, which I'm, I've got something in, in the, in the, the coffers right the, the works right now um that i haven't pinned down yet but i'm excited about the ideas of it so nice and so what types of retreats when you like do you so the ones so the ones that i've i've facilitated in the past were specifically focused on women um there was just a draw to that for me and i i was collaborating with a couple people as well and but the retreats typically Again, more the ones that I'm 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 pulling together, not necessarily the corporate retreats, but the retreats where I'm organizing and people are coming from all over the place. They're going to have some kind of level of some um, energy work when it comes to helping people learn to do their own energy work. That yes. to me is a big big deal. It's yes. that whole that whole thing about you know teaching the person to fish not just giving them the fish because yes. that for me, that's one of the things that stuck for me at growing up is that to take the mysticism out of all of this to empower, right? That's one of the reasons we have that in our, in our name 
to empower people to really feel confident in making their own decisions in life, in healing themselves, in in helping create healing and change in the world, all of that kind of thing. So, so the retreats will involve a lot of, of that, a lot mm -hmm. of interaction, helping people not just absorb information, but share their own wisdom because yes. we know as we share, that's where we learn even more and we learn from each other. So there's this, it's a very intimate and, and mutually healing, uplifting, immersive. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Oh, I love that. And, and so, I mean, and because you were bored, because you weren't doing enough, you thought you would <laughs> partner with your folks, your parents and start the Empowered Soul Network. And how, like, how did that all come to be? And, you know, it's, it kind of came to be the way I feel like a lot of my life has come to be, which is just having having an intuition to do something and and following through on it. And so I've learned I've learned now over the course of my life that I don't always have very rarely, frankly, do I have the clear picture <laughs> about where it's going and all the details, but trusting those leaps and and just taking them, and following through on them until I feel complete, which is part of my thrust is about being complete. And so that feeling of, okay, this now feels complete and, and honoring that and shifting to the next thing, but the inspiration, so that's the kind of the, that's the backside of it, right? That's the, that's the, the inner part of it. Right. And then there's the obvious, the, just the part about really enjoying helping people helping people shine that mm -hmm. I know for me was something that it was, it's been a journey for me of, of letting myself really put myself out there, right? Really. It's kind of like that. The more you're seen, the more vulnerable you are kind of feeling. And so, but that's, that's so limiting because there is there, there's always a feeling of that lack of fulfillment and really fully expressing if there's any level of holding back. Right. So that to me is obviously, I imagine you can relate that, you know, we need to continue to help people do the things that we've been through because that's helps us continue to move through them at another level and another level and another level or you know, the, the famous onion peel, you know, analogy. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there, and I think there's also a way that, it, that in, in my experience anyways, it's that as you're saying, as you're helping someone else or, or sharing with them what worked and what didn't work, there's just a way that it reminds me because it's really easy to, it's easy to let go of the thing that I, that we know works just forget it for a day or get busy doing something else. And I find that the more with, with sharing with others, whether they are farther along on their path or not quite as far or on a completely different path whatsoever. And we just sort of waving from the crossroads. Um, there's a way I find much like what you're saying. It's, it just reaffirms to me. Ah, this, right. Or if I start to go off a bit and then I'm, working with someone and then I'm like right this is this is this is why we do it every day this is why you don't just brush your teeth once and it's done <laughs> these things need to be reminded and, and working on so it's uh yeah it's it's there is something about seeing the the sparkle in someone's eye the first time the penny drops yeah yeah, yeah. and to see it's I was just having a conversation with my husband either this morning or yesterday, time's flying, but about how easy it is, just like you said, to, to fall back into the comfort zone, mm -hmm. that, that thing that we know. And so it's that whatever it is to continuously, consciously choose the path I'm walking down rather than reverting into the path that's already been grooved 
with all of my habits and so forth. Yes. Yes. And, and because it's a softer, easier way. Mm -hmm. So it must be right. Like it, it, can, <laughs> right. It, it can, it can just, it can feel like that, but you know, mud slides downhill and it doesn't yeah. mean that's the right way to go. You know, it's just, uh, it, it's true. I, I, we were just having a conversation about this too. And it was, it's um, my husband and I was just very much how um, comfort is nice and being comfortable is is lovely and wonderful and it's i would never try to tell someone oh you don't but i can find a new comfortable that is actually more life-giving and that was the part that i that i'm i still you know i'll be 65 in a few months and i'm still once in a while i'll be like right when I was 20 and 30 and four, and I'm like, I'm going to be like 90 on my hundredth birthday. I'll still be going, right. I need to do this thing. And if I don't do it and remember to keep doing it, mudslides downhill, baby. It's easy to, 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 yeah. Yeah. It slides downhill or, and then it starts to suck you in. And then, well, <laughs> exactly. It makes me think of, of, um, <laughs> I saw this, a meme one day that's, and it was just fit me to a T. It said, it said, um, growing up, I thought quicksand was going to be a much bigger problem because <laughs> we used to, we used to watch all these shows and, you know, there was always quicksand somewhere and it's always the problem, I mean, yeah. it was always a big problem, but in a way it, it for, it's not for literal quicksand, not in my area anyways, but there is quicksand all over the place and it's easy to just be wandering along and not doing what I know is right for me following along that path that just leads me and, and that's simple things remember, remembering to walk remembering to brush your teeth you know I mean there's these little eating clean I mean it, it, it doesn't it's not all big mysterious things I, I was gonna say too I love that you talked about taking the mysticism mm -hmm. taking the removing that because, well, I'm going to tell, I was, I was, I was at a, I don't know, some kind of a fair thing. I was, I had a booth and people were coming and there was, and they, and I, and I, and, it, and maybe you'll relate to this. Maybe you won't. I I'm open to feedback always. Um, people were coming and saying, oh, you're like this healer like this. And I was like, oh, I, I needed to step back. So this is me, my thing personally, right? Um, I do some things and some healing might occur and I, I do sound and music and healing comes through gongs and singing bowls. I don't think of myself. And, and the reason that I'm saying that is because it's the same with when you're doing something intuitively with a person, it's not magic. I'm not magic. I don't, I, you, you, the, the, the royal you, anyone, all of us, we were all born with this every single one of us and some of us have learned to um work it more or trust it more but we all have that thing and so i love it when you said that because i was um i i know some people felt a little put off i said i just it's not magic i mean it's very magical and that's lovely it feels magical and romantic and wonderful and all the little names that people want to put to things but the basis of it is it's really science and it's just energy and, it, and it's how it all works I think I just got kind of off on a on a rampage there but uh. <laughs> okay yeah no I I I know what you're talking about and I would I guess the way I would describe that for myself and how I relate to that is that well two facets right when you're talking about healing it's that concept that the doctor doesn't heal me. The doctor can facilitate all of these things, but the, I I have a big role in whether or not I I survive something or thrive out of whatever that is. And it's I think it's the same concept with going to healers. I I love going and receiving healing from people. Right? That's we all need the extra help and support. And why on earth would we do it alone? Yeah. For me, it's just that reality of, of wanting everyone to know that they have the capacity within them yes. to do that also. And the same with tapping into your intuition. That is a natural thing. 
If you watch children, they naturally move intuitively. Mm. So it's our heads that start to get in the way, right? Mm. That start to overpower eventually that natural intuition. I, I do relate to what you're saying. And I I think the terminology is, is great. I think the intention is what's really important. And yes. the whether or not I call myself a healer or whether or not I call myself a facilitator of healing, I think that's sure that's important, but it's really because there's an energy I'm holding within. So yeah. it's like, if I'm, if I'm coming to the table, like I can fix you, my motives are already a little bit off, but they're, right. they're, not, they're unclear. And right. so that going back to being a certified co consultant, that was one of the things that we're constantly doing inner work on ourselves and continuing education and all that kind of stuff so that I stay connected to that clarity because it's yeah. really easy to the you know the more experience you have and the more you're involved it's again going back to the habits it's easy to get into things that may not really actually be connected to that highest clearest space right yeah i like I, I like uh, when you're saying that I'm thinking yeah that it's 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 so true that we can still be doing all the things and everything feels great but am I at like you had mentioned I love that's I love the way you you said that the the clearest wasn't the highest right it was the clearest I said both but it's what I bet brought back to clearest because yeah that's, that's I, I felt I, I thought maybe you said highest at first and then when highest is okay it's you know it's, it's a personal it's is am I at the place that is um the best for me the where I can see the best um, that is possible for me at this time? Am I at that place where things are clear and I can be doing a lot of wonderful things and still not be there? And so I, 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 what I hear when you're talking is very much that you're so open to um, challenging yourself and continuing to learn and, can, and, and just making sure you're, what, what's the, um, the plumb line? Checking your plumb line. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, yeah, checking the plumb line for sure. I, I, and I feel like that's so important to do in life. Period. I mean, whether yeah. I'm doing that in in when I'm being of service to clients, or whether I'm doing that being of service to myself and my family and so forth, to yeah. keep coming back to that that clear, clear pure space and where, where's that level line is is important. And it to me, it's about respect. There's a feeling of respecting people, not just accepting people where they're at, but respecting where people are at. And right. come back to that, he, you know, the idea of healing. Um, if you come to me and you're asking for my help, right, then absolutely, I'm going to be of service. And even if you don't, I might drop a few little pearls, right, to to give you the opportunity to put your hand out and say, Hey, I, I need to, I need some help. Right. But, but if you're not, then who am I to take away that opportunity for you to stumble? Because mm -hmm. I know when I've stumbled in life, that's been some of the most important growth for me ever. Yeah. So, that level of respect working with people, I think, is really important to me, at least. No, no, I, I or I'm saying no. It's I'm meaning yes. I'm like no. I'm not disagreeing at all. I, I, I think it's it's perfect. It's it's rem it's remembering that everybody, that everyone, wherever they're at. I don't know. I, I, I think it's just the respect part of it is 
is is what separates um, someone when we're coming together with someone and you're doing healing with a person or the intuitive stuff or working with the empowered soul network, respecting people for who they are, what they are, not what I think they should, might be or all you know, my fantasies about who they could be and what all of the shoulds, you know, don't should all over people. S-H-O-U-L-D, I'm not swearing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, I love that you said that, the respect part of exactly who they are and what they're, and what they were created for. That might be something completely different than I would imagine. And that that's for them to sort out. Yeah. yeah. That's the whole journey. <laughs> yeah. So the, so when you're, when you're doing, um, intuitive stuff, doing intuitive training with people, what, what kinds of things, is that a class? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it all of the above? All of, yeah, all of the above. I, I work with one-on-one -on -one clients and, and, and that typically it just, obviously there's a certain level of a deeper dive you go in, go to when you're working with someone one-on-one, -on -one. but the, the group classes are, are so powerful also because you have that collective energy, right? Have all of that. So in my ideal world, clients are getting some of both and, you know, throw in a retreat every now and then, cause you need that hard hitting, deep, 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 immersive dive, right. Yes. With some fun mixed in. Um, so, yeah, so it's, I mean, there are lots of different techniques that to me, the idea no, let me let me back up. It's not about the idea. Intuitive development is a lot about practice mm -hmm. because you have to feel it. So I can introduce techniques and so forth. And <clears throat> I typically do that, excuse me, in the one-on-one -on -one sessions where it's a combination of some coaching, right? Some, okay, what are you working on? What do you need help with? And then it's showing some techniques to support that. And then now go, go, go use those, go, go experience. Right. Because when you experience, then it gets out of your head and it starts to become part of your wisdom and your growth. Otherwise it's just knowledge. You're just learning, but you're not growing. So that experiencing all of that and okay, gosh. And then we come back and like, okay, I really, I got, I, I felt good with this, but man, this is what was happening to me here. And then we can reflect on that and regroup and go, okay, let's do this, right? And go forward. So that's typically how my one-on-ones work. And, and the, the group ones are set up a little bit more structured where it's, you know, here's, here's the, the curriculum we're going to go through for these 12 weeks, for example. Right. And yeah. Oh, that's good. And I, and I like it that you, there's a certain teaching amount and then to go off and to experience some of it, because I think one of the things um, that most people who walk more freely, more regularly, however, in with intuition, let's just say that it's, it's learning to trust yourself. So if someone's learning something and then you how many times have any of us had the thought where we get something happens, we get this thought and then we think, whoa, that's, why did I even think that? Why did that questioning it, not trusting it, that little voice, it whispers and then speaks and then yells and then gets the fog horn and it, it does everything. And it's so easy to say, even if, like I've, I've walked in this for a long time. And I have had a thought, had something that I just called it my own thought. I thought, oh, that, I don't know. that seems a little bit off. And I think that it takes time to learn to trust yourself in that, that that little voice is 99. <laughs> you know, I mean, it has to come through this filter. I get that part, but it's, it's so for our best and highest interest. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then there's all of the, the nuances of, like we talked about quieting it down, right? Quieting the mind so that that's still small voice can be heard. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm with you. It's, it's, I'm not perfect. Be real, not perfect. Right. That's yeah. what it <laughs> says, because there's no, there's no end to how much we can grow. So mm -hmm. I'm still practicing. I'm still working on all of those things. I still, 
you know, all of those little fears and limitations that we have, the, the little blockages in the kinks in our system, they still show up, you know, they yes. show up maybe for a shorter amount of time. They show up in more subtle ways, maybe, but they still show up. And so I know that, you know, it's all of those can affect our intuition and listening to that because the monkey mind starts to get in there and all of that. So it's just learning and practicing and, and the more we can experience life. I'm not a big talk therapy person, you know, that that's why I said like, it's like maybe 50, 50, right. Of Yeah. Let's get down to it. And, and, um, and then let's practice. Let's and just let's practice do this and play and have fun. And <laughs> yeah, go live life. I'm not going to yeah. sit and talk to you about how to swim. Let's go to the pool. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Well, I, I, I mean, I could chat and sit and chat with you for a very long time. I know that, that, um, unfortunately we're coming very close to the end of our time together today. Um, is there any parting thoughts that you have any, anything that you'd like to share? Um, anything that we didn't touch on, I will have all of your, um, connect to any way to connect to you, all of your social media and your, anything that you would like to give me, I'll make sure that people know how to get in touch with you. That'll be in our show notes. Um, but outside of that, um, anything that we haven't touched on today that you thought, oh, I'd like to share about that. I think it's funny. I just did a, a another conversation earlier in, in one of the, the Facebook groups and we were talking about manifestation. And the thing that came to me at the end there is coming back to me. So it must be a theme of the day, which is just about the, the, the soul moves by desire. And so when it comes to what you want in life, there's reason and purpose to that so to honor it because those desires that you have not necessarily we're talking about the the, the not the instant gratification stuff right we could we could go back and forth around all this all the time right got but it just, yes you feel what i'm saying is those desires that you have they have meaning and they have purpose and they're pulling you towards what you need on a core level. And as a soul, we have these lessons that we need to learn. We are, they're all unique to us. So all of our desires are helping us with that. So if we can connect that mm -hmm. and number one, allow, just give permission to yourself to follow those desires. And number two, really give yourself time to go, what am I learning from these experiences in life? So that you can really, that's how I think you can start to become more of that captain of your ship rather than being tossed around in the ocean, feeling like you're at the mercy of what's going on. Oh, I love it. That's, well, that's quite the nugget to lead with. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Sandra, I uh, thank you. Um, I I always enjoy listening to you and sharing with you. It's, it's um, you're a lovely individual, and uh, thank you for spending some time with us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I really appreciate the opportunity. I loved it. Thank you, and to uh, all our listeners, uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Take good care, and do remember to find your joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you found a piece of your joy in this episode, I would love to hear about what came up for you so that we can continue to grow the impact of this show. Thanks again. See you soon. And remember, find your joy. Bye.